Hi and welcome to a free pattern video. Today I'm going to teach you how to knit this stockinette pumpkin. You can knit it flat or in the round, so on straight or circular needles. This is one of the easiest pumpkins you can make because it just involves stockinette stitch with a little bit of increasing and decreasing, which gives it this really beautiful puckered top. And I'll teach you how to knit an I-cord stem and how to attach it and seam and stuff this pumpkin. So I'm going to walk you through every step and make it really easy for you. So let's get on to the materials. You can use any yarn and needles that you want. I would recommend choosing a pair of needles that when you knit up your yarn, the knit stitches are not too loose because if they're too loose, you'll be able to see the stuffing through your pumpkin. And you'll also need a yarn needle, a stitch marker if you're working in the round, and some stuffing. You don't have to follow a gauge for this pattern, but if you do, keep in mind that your gauge will stretch out a bit when you stuff your pumpkin. The sizing will just vary greatly depending on the yarn and needles you use and how much stuffing you put in the pumpkin. So we're going to have to do a tiny bit of math, but don't worry, it's very easy. So if you don't want to work with a gauge swatch, it's totally okay. I just want to visualize it for you. So we're going to cast on a smaller amount of stitches than the width of our pumpkin, and we increase to the widest point of our pumpkin. And then after working plain, we're decreasing again to our cast on stitch count. So the body size of your pumpkin will be determined by the body stitch count after you work your beginning increases. So I'm about to walk you through a little bit of math if you want a specific size of a pumpkin. But if you don't care and you're just feeling a little bit spontaneous, if you're working flat, just cast on an even amount of stitches. I'd say at least four to six stitches at the bare minimum. And if you're working in the round, you'll need to cast on an odd number of stitches. But after you do your or invisible join in the round, which I will show you, you'll lose one stitch in that and you'll end up with an even amount of stitches. So if you don't want to measure a gauge, just cast on a quick test amount and knit one row to see if you like the width it creates for your pumpkin. If you like that stitch count amount, just make sure to adjust it to be a multiple of five stitches and then divide that stitch count by 2.5 to get your estimated cast on. If you're working in the round, that is your cast on, unless you're doing my invisible join in the round method, in which case you would need to add one stitch because you always decrease one stitch when you do that. That method but if you're working flat you can add two stitches and if you happen to know your gauge it's a four-step process so you want to pick a circumference size for your pumpkin at its widest point take your stitch gauge per one inch 2.5 centimeters and multiply it by that circumference of your pumpkin to get your estimated stitch count for the pumpkin body now adjust your body stitch count to be a multiple of five stitches and that will give you your actual body stitch count abbreviated as a for number three your cast on is your body stitch count a divided by 2.5 and that will give you your estimated cast on amount. So if you're working in the round, take answer 3a and add one stitch because you'll be doing your invisible join in the round where you decrease one stitch. And if you're working flat, you need to add two salvage stitches to 3a. So take your answer from 3a, add two stitches, and that will give you your cast on amount for working flat. You can make this pattern flat or in the round. I'm going to demonstrate it in the round, but you could definitely just follow all of the instructions, but knit flat. So to begin, we're going to need to cast on. Your cast on amount should be an even number if you're working flat, and if you're working in the round, it should be a multiple of two plus one. And after you join in the round, it will be an even number. So I cast on 23 stitches, but after my join, I will have 22 stitches. And you want to leave yourself a tail at the bottom of your cast on amount, I'd say about 12 inches at least. And you can do any cast on a method that you prefer. If you're an advanced knitter, you could do a provisional cast on and you can remove that later when you're trying to cinch in the bottom of your pumpkin and it might make it look a little bit neater, but I'm not a huge fan of working that cast on. So I'm just gonna do my favorite, which is a long tail cast on. When I was deciding on a cast on amount, I pretty much just cast on the least amount of stitches that I could get on my needles. They're kind of stretched out a little bit, but I wanted the least amount of stitches that could fit so that I could have a pretty small bottom area of the pumpkin and that it would be easier to cinch in. So here I have my 23 stitches and I'm ready to join in the round. So you're gonna have a stitch marker at the ready and you're gonna have your working yarn attached to your right hand needle and you wanna make sure that your stitches are not twisted and you're going to slip the first stitch from your left hand needle to your right hand needle. So go into the first stitch into the front loop of it as if you were to purl but with your yarn in the back of your work. So from right to left into the front loop and just slip it to your right hand needle. And now we're gonna take the second stitch on a right hand needle and pull it up and over this slip stitch and off the needle. So we're gonna hold this slip stitch with our index finger and we're going to take our left hand needle and go into the second stitch on your right hand needle. 
into the front loop of it from left to right. Remember to hold this stitch with your index finger, and I would suggest holding this stitch with your thumb. And pull it up and over the slip stitch and off your needle. So it's gonna look really loose and wonky, but you just pull on the working yarn and the tail yarn to close it up. Then you can place your stitch marker on your right hand needle and you're ready to work in the round. So I'm going to write out both for working flat and in the round the instructions for each section before I demonstrate it. So for row one, you're just going to knit all the way around. You just go into the front loop of the first stitch, crisscross your needles, right? Yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through and slide that stitch off your left hand needle. That's it, just do that all the way around your row and I'll meet you back here for row two. So when you get to the end of every row, you're just gonna slip your stitch marker from your left needle to your right needle. And then for increase row two, you're going to work a knit one, make one left, followed by a repeat of a knit two, make one left until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. So if you don't know how to do a make one left, you can put any increase here that you want. You could do a yarn over, although if you do a yarn over, you'll have a tiny hole. You could put a make one right, a knit one front and back, although I do have to say if you're working a knit one front and back, you'll have to do it in the knit stitch before the increase in my pattern. So where it says like knit one, make one left, you'll work a knit front and back instead of that combo. And knit the first stitch, so go into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And now we're going to work our make one left. So in between the stitches on our left needle and our right needle, we have a few bars. And the one at the very top is this one right here. So we're gonna place this bar here on our left hand needle. To do this, use your fingers and stick your needle from front to back and slide it on, right? And now we're going to knit into the back loop of it. We've got a front loop here and a back loop here. We're going to knit into the back loop of it. So we take our right hand needle and we go into the back loop of it. See how my left needle is in front of my right? That's how you know you're in the back loop. And then just yarn over as normal from front to back and pull a loop through. And then you can slide that stitch off your left hand needle and you have just increased one stitch. So that's our make one left and now you're ready to work your repeat, which is a knit two followed by a make one left until you have only one stitch left, which you will knit. So go ahead and work that and I'll meet you back here for row three. And at the end of your row, just remember to slip your marker from your left needle to your right. And for increase rows three and four, you're just going to knit all the way around. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for row five. And then for increase row number five, you're gonna work a knit two, make one left, followed by a repeat of a knit three, make one left until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. So we knit two, just normally. And then you take that horizontal bar that's at the top in between our needles, and you stick your left needle under it from front to back to pick it up. And now you take your right needle and go into the back loop of it. So our left needle is in front of our right needle. And then yarn over and pull a loop through and then slide that off your left hand needle and that's it you just repeat and knit three make one left until you have only one stitch left which you will knit and then for rows six seven and eight you're just going to knit them and then i'll meet you back here for row nine and then for row nine you're going to work a knit three make one left followed by a repeat of a knit four make one left until you have one stitch left which you will knit so you know the drill by now knit the first three stitches just normally, and then work your increase. So we're gonna pick up this bar here and put it on our needle, and then we're going to knit through the back loop. So the back loop back here, you're gonna pick it up with your right needle, so your needles are crisscrossed and your left needle is in front of your right. And then you can yarn over and pull a loop through, and then slide that stitch off your left hand needle, and that's it. You're gonna work your repeat of a knit four, make one left until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. And then you're just going to knit plain until almost your desired length of your pumpkin. You're gonna cinch in the bottom and cinch in the top. You wanna to knit this section as tall as you want it. I made a pretty squatty pumpkin, so I only knit a couple of inches, but if you wanted it to be a lot taller, you would just knit a lot more rows. So just go ahead and knit as many rows as you want, plain knit, and I'll meet you back here for your decrease section. 
So for decrease row one, we're going to work knit two, knit two together, followed by a repeat of a knit three, knit two together until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. So go ahead and knit two into the front loop, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And now it's time to work a knit two together. Basically, you're gonna go into the front loops of the next two stitches at the same time. So into the front loop of both of these stitches, it should look like this. Yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through and slide those two stitches off. So you had two stitches and now you only have one. And now you're ready for your repeat. So knit three normally. Now work that knit two together again. So go into both of these stitches as if you're going to knit them, yarn over, pull through, slide off. So just work a knit three followed by a knit two together until you have only one stitch left. And then for just decrease rows two, three, and four, you're actually just going to knit all the way around. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for decrease row five. And for decrease row five, you're gonna work a knit one, knit two together, followed by a repeat of a knit two, knit two together until you have only one stitch left, which you will knit. So it's almost identical to what we've done before. So knit the first stitch. And then we're going to knit the next two stitches together. So go into the front loop of both of them as if to knit. Yarn over, pull a loop through, slide off. And then we're going to work our repeat. So knit two. And then work a knit two together. So into the front loop both stitches at the same time, yarn over, pull a loop through, slide off. And you just repeat that until you have only one stitch left, which you will knit. And then for decrease rows six and seven, you're just going to knit around. So go ahead and do that. And I will meet you back here for row eight. And for decrease row eight, you're going to work a knit two together, followed by a repeat of a knit one, knit two together until you have only one stitch left, which you will knit. So we pretty much know the drill by now. So to work a knit two together, we go into the front loop of two stitches at the same time. Okay, it should look like that. Yarn over, pull a loop through, slide both those off. And now we're going to work our repeat. So a knit one, followed by a knit two together. So again, into the front loops of both of those stitches at the same time. Yarn over, pull through, slide off. And that's it. Just work your repeat all the way around until you have one stitch left and go ahead and knit it. And I'll meet you back here at the end. So once you get done with your row, you can remove your stitch marker because you don't need it anymore. And now we're going to cinch up the top of our pumpkin. So go ahead and cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail. Thread your tail through a yarn needle. And now we're gonna take our yarn and we're gonna go through each stitch on our left hand needle and thread our tail yarn through it. So as if we were going to purl, go into the front loop of the first stitch from right to left, only picking up the front loop. You can do multiple at a time, slide them off your needle, pull your yarn through. You don't have to pull tightly yet and just keep doing that. So into the front loop from right to left, you can do multiple at the same time, slide them off your needle and pull the yarn through. And just do that all the way around the top of your pumpkin. So it should look like this. And now we're gonna close it. So go ahead and pull on that piece of yarn. Now you wanna pull pretty tight. You don't wanna snap your yarn or anything. Pull tight enough that you close the top. So once there's no more gap in the middle here, or as much as you can prevent that, you're going to take your yarn needle and thread it through the middle. Okay, and then go on the inside. You can go ahead and pull that tail yarn through. Now you can turn it inside out. I'm just gonna go around this circle and I'm just going to thread my yarn back through it a few more times just to make sure that it's really closed and secure. So I'm going to go out through a couple of these stitches that are, you know, a row or two out and then back through a couple of those final stitches. Then go out to a couple stitches a row or two out, pull the yarn through. That's what we're just kind of doing is going through the stitches that were our final stitches and then maybe grabbing one or two from a row or two away. You can just do that a couple times, just so that we really feel like our yarn is secure. And I'd say that is about as good and closed as we're gonna get. So now we're gonna make an I-cord stem, because it doesn't really look like much of a pumpkin when it's stuffed if it doesn't have an I-cord stem. So you're gonna need either double pointed needles, which are just like a long stick that has a point on each end. It does not have a stopper on one side or a set of circulars. 
leave yourself a little bit of a tail and you're going to cast on three stitches. Doesn't matter how you do it. I like the long tail cast on method. It's whatever you prefer. Cast on three stitches and I have a tail. So normally when you would work something flat, you would turn your work, right? We're not gonna do that. We're gonna take our stitches and slide them down to the end of our other needle if you're working on circulars or the end of your same needle if you're working on DPNs. So if you'll notice, the yarn is attached to our third stitch on our left hand needle. That is exactly where we want it to be attached. So knit the first stitch normally, go into the front loop of it, crisscross your needles, and bring that yarn over your right needle from front to back, pull a loop through, and slide that stitch off your needle. Now the important aspect of this is that you need to pull on your working yarn after you knit that stitch to kind of close any gap that you would get doesn't have to be super tight. If you can't knit the second stitch easily, then you have pulled it too tight and you just need to pull up on the stitch on your right hand needle, okay? So pull it tight enough that you're gonna close the gap behind it and then just knit the next two stitches. And you don't have to pull tight after these two. The important thing about an I-cord is that you never turn your work. You just slide it down so that your working yarn is attached to the last stitch on your needle now. And you just repeat the row I just showed you. A tip that I find helpful is after you knit your first stitch, you go ahead and insert your needle into the second stitch and then you pull your yarn tight. That way you know you'll be able to fit your needles in and then you yarn over, pull through and slide off. And that's it, you just repeat that until you're ready to bind off and I will show you how to bind off for the eye cord. So now that we have reached our desired length of our stem, we slide it down to the end like we have been doing and bind off. With our yarn at the back of our left hand needle, we're going to knit the first stitch. So yarn over, pull through, slide off. Pull that yarn tight and then knit the next stitch normally. And now we're going to pull the second stitch on our right hand needle over the first and off. So with your left hand needle, go into the front loop of it and you're going to hold onto it with your thumb and hold onto this stitch here on your needle with your index finger. Pull it over and off. And we're gonna do that again. So knit the next stitch normally. And then go into this second stitch here from left to right. You might wanna hold it with your thumb and hold this one with your index finger. You can slide it down to the tip of your needle and pull one over the other. And now you can cut your yarn, leaving a tail and we're just going to pull final stitch out. Now this looks kind of sloppy, doesn't it? So I'm going to thread our bind off tail onto a yarn needle. I'm just gonna kind of tidy this up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look a little bit better. And the nice thing about this, since we're sewing it onto our pumpkin, is if you like the cast on edge better, have that be the side that shows. So I'm just gonna kind of thread this through a couple of the stitches. We have this nasty loop hanging out here. I'm just gonna thread through a couple of them, kind of pull it closed. And then once I'm satisfied with it, I'm just going to take my yarn needle and just kind of thread it all the way down, being careful not to really snag anything. Pull on the length of it so it's not kind of wrinkled and then cut that tail, being careful to cut the tail attached to your yarn needle and not the other one. Now we can attach our I-cord stem to the top of our pumpkin. So go ahead and thread the cast on tail through your yarn needle and we're going to thread it through the hole at the top of our pumpkin. Thread that through and there we have it it's starting to take some shape. So flip it on the inside. You want to make sure that you pull the tail so that the I cord is right up against the pumpkin and you're going to thread this through underneath a couple of these stitches next to the hole. So now we're gonna do something similar to what I do when I add a pom-pom, is I'm gonna go back through this hole, back through it, and I'm going to grab on to another area of this I-cord. So like one of the stitches at the bottom. Go back up through it, and now I'm gonna go back through the hole. We're just trying to make sure it's nice and secure. So now we can go back through a couple more of these stitches. Now, if it isn't feeling very secure, like if it's feeling a little bit too wobbly, you can do that again. So you can go back up through the middle, grab a hold of an area of the I-cord, pull up, and then go back through the hole at the top. 
You can do that as many times as you need to get it to feel very secure. And when you're done with that, you can just thread it through a couple of these stitches for one final time. And then you can cut a tail. And you can also cut a tail of the yarn that we used to close the pumpkin because you're all attached, right? So here's the top of it. We're getting some bubbling here, which is great because it gives it kind of a knobbly look similar to a, a real pumpkin. Now it's time for the fun part where we get to fill it. So I have a bag of polyfill. So here I've got a whole bunch of it and I'm just gonna start stuffing my pumpkin with it. This is totally up to your personal preference. Do you want kind of a more of a deflated look or like a really full firm pumpkin? It's kind of up to your preference. Here's what we have so far. It's, it feels a little bit deflated, so I'm gonna add some more and just kind of push it down towards the top. So this is looking pretty good. I wanted a pretty squatty pumpkin. I think it needs just a little bit more and then we're ready to close up the bottom. And it will get a little bit more squished when you close it, so just keep that in mind as you're filling it. So remember how I told you to keep a long cast on tail? When you're ready to close it, you just go ahead and thread that through a yarn needle. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go kind of like a little running stitch around here to cinch it closed. So we have like knit stitches that go like this, right? Down in columns. We're gonna go around and just kind of pick up legs of those stitches. Doesn't have to be in order, doesn't have to be in pairs. You can just kind of do this all the way around as you see fit. So underneath a couple of these, we're just trying to go underneath these stitches so that we can cinch it closed. There does not have to be any real order to this. You just want to go close to your cast on edge, go underneath all the way around until you get back to where you started. So once you get back to the area that you started, you can go ahead and start to pull on your tail yarn to close your pumpkin. Now it's gonna look a little bit puckered, that's okay. This is the bottom of our pumpkin, so no one's gonna even really see it anyway, right? So what you can do if it bothers you is you can kinda go underneath each of the puckered areas and just kinda tack them down a little bit, pulling your yarn through, and then going through some normal stitches, and then going through the ones that are bubbling up a little bit, and then through some normal stitches again. And just do that all the way around. It's not gonna be perfect. If you wanted more of a perfect edge, you would have done a provisional cast on, which was another option. So you can just kinda go back and forth until it looks a little bit neater. And then when you're done, you can just kind of go across the whole bottom with your needle, pull it through, and cut your tail close to the bottom there. And if you want, you can kinda tug on it a little bit and it should kinda pull towards the inside. And there we have it. That is our finished pumpkin. Now you can thread some wire through this eye cord if you want it to stand up, you know, more perfectly straight. You could also steam it and kind of shape it as you steam it. You could even put a pipe cleaner through it or something. I find that just kind of bending it over, it will hold that shape, especially since it's just decoration and I'm not going to be messing with it a lot. And there you have it. That is how you knit a stockinette pumpkin. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a few other pumpkin pattern videos if you want to learn how to make different kinds. You can find those videos linked below and you can get a bundle of all the pumpkin patterns together in one PDF. You can find all the links for that in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.